Hey everyone, we're going to be beginning the webinar in about three minutes. Hi everyone, welcome to Bride Alive. I'm Tom, founder of Bride Alive, and today we're gonna to talk about the process of selling the bride with Bride Alive software. Now this is a Google Plus Hangout, so what that means is that you're able to um, ask questions down on the bottom right, and then also the video is gonna be posted to our YouTube page, which means that you'll be able to come back at a later time and review the material that we've covered here today, if you feel so inclined. We'll also take that video and post it on our resources page right underneath webinars. Now this is going to be a 30 minute webinar. I know everyone's got their stores probably open today. So I want to uh, be considerate of your time and let's go ahead and, and jump right into the slides. All right, so first thing here, are the goals and the agenda for what we're gonna to cover today. So we got a few customers here, a few groups of people that are, that are in the call today. Uh, the first are some new customers that have just joined on 
And so what I want to do today is to sort of demonstrate the typical sales process for um, a bride when she comes in and buys a gown from your store. Next, we have some folks that have been migrated over from our old desktop product, and they are now um, using the cloud version. And so I want to familiarize you with the look and the feel of, of the software and maybe what's changed and some of the things that, um, that you might find new in the system. Next, we have folks that are currently on our desktop product and are sort of considering whether or not they want to move over to our web-based product. And so I'll highlight some of the things that are new and some of the new functionality that's included. Next, there's I know there's a lot of folks on the call that are still sort of in that research phase and that are still sort of deciding whether or not they are interested in moving forward with um, the software. So um, I'll be showing you how we can make your life easier by using Bright Alive. So the agenda for today is to move through a typical sales process for a bride, every, every point in the process. So from the time where she arrives on your website, to booking an appointment, to taking a special order, to creating a purchase order with your manufacturer for that uh, special order, receiving the merchandise into the store, and then ultimately delivering the product to the bride. So what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on the overall process not the nitty gritty and the, and the fine details. Uh, we're gonna do, be doing some further webinars where we do some deep dives into specific topics like the wedding registry or uh, the point of sale module, um, various other modules and, and get really into the details on them. And at that point, we'll be able to explore all the different functionality in there. So be on the lookout for some new uh, webinars. We're gonna start doing these probably one or two a month. And at the end of the call, we're gonna do a question and answer session. And uh, that question and answer session um, will be basically answering the questions that you post in the bottom right of the screen. So please go ahead and post your questions. Um, I'll be coming back on camera here at the end to answer all those questions for you. All right, so if anybody has caught the show that's been around for a little while now on CNBC called The Profit, you'll notice uh, Marcus Limonis, the, the main guy on the show, he always says that he believes in people, process, and product. And that sort of thing has, has stuck with me for quite a while now. And um, the show is great because every time, it's about the only show that I watch, but it's, it's a great show because every time uh, it comes on, there's always something to learn from the show. And he talks specifically about process. And that's one of the things that I focus on a lot when we were developing Bridal Live is how can we help bridal stores be as optimized as possible in the process of serving the bride. So that's what we're going to focus on today, that high level process of a typical bridal sale. So let's go ahead and jump over to um, an example website here that we've created. This would be a website that, um, let's just pretend it's your website, um, but it's a website that we've created and branded just as your bridal shop to demonstrate how the system works um, with your bride from the point that she arrives on your website. So the bride gets engaged, she may do a Google search, or she may have heard about your business uh, through word of mouth or on social media. Whatever marketing channels you use, she will eventually arrive back on your website to see what you're all about. And so when you, she's on your website, you need to have forms or a way for her to uh, engage with you and to actually turn, that so that you can turn her from a website visitor into somebody who's actually in your store um, that you're able to sell a product to. So <clears throat> we've got a series, Bridal Life has a series of website forms that allows you to capture that, uh, that lead from your site and turn them into foot traffic. One of those uh, forms is uh, just a simple sort of lead acquisition form. Um, this can be used in a variety of different ways. One of them is by just um, you know, allowing a bride to maybe register to win a free veil or some way for you to get her into your marketing funnel. Um, two of the most popular forms that we have though are what's called the appointment scheduler and the appointment request form. Now a lot of our existing customers are using those forms on their websites today to get appointment requests or appointments scheduled on their calendar um, directly inside the program. So the beauty of using the Bride Alive forms is that it's not like just any other website form where you get an email when somebody submits it. The information that the bride submits on the website will go directly into your Bride Alive software so that you're not worried about, you know, you're not doing double data entry and things like that. 
So I'm going to talk a little bit about each of these forms. The, the scheduler will actually allow the bride to book an appointment right on your calendar. Now, it can be scary to a lot of folks, but inside the system, there's a very sophisticated booking algorithm that prevents double booking and also prevents um, you know, brides from booking appointments on days where you might not have enough staff to handle um, the, the, the bride. The request form is, is probably one of our most popular ones because a lot of stores like to have the um, control over whether or not the bride is coming in. They might want to pre-qualify her a little bit more. Uh, they might also want to um, you know, shuffle things around to make an appointment work. Um, so the request form kind of gives you control over that. The scheduler is something that's brand new to the web-based version of Bride Alive. So we're going to talk about that first. Or we're going to talk about that as we go through and acquire this lead from the website. So let's pretend that we're a bride. And let's go through and book an appointment. So I'm going to say that I want a bridal appointment and I want to come in on the first. So when the bride selects the, the date, the system is looking to see what your staffing looks like, what other appointments you might have available, what fitting rooms can service bridal appointments, a variety of different uh, logic is, in, is going on behind the scenes that allows you to not overbook. So as soon as the bride selects a date and time, she can go ahead and put her information in here. So I'm just going to put in Jackie Jones, and I'll just put a phone number in, and I'll put an email address in uh, at bridealive.com. She'll select her event date, kind of go through here. This is a required field and then she can put her address in. Now one of the nice things about our web forms is that it allows the bride to opt in for other forms of marketing. So not only will she submit her information into your Bride Alive program, but she'll also opt in um, to various forms of marketing. And so Bride Alive integrates with, with two other marketing platforms, MailChimp and Twilio, to allow you to send email marketing blasts and also text message uh, confirmations and things of that nature. So if the bride opts in, she'll be able, you'll be able to send those uh, those marketing messages or account alerts through those channels. So once the appointment has been submitted, it will come in to your Bride Alive. So let's go take a look. We've booked an appointment on the first. So this is the new login screen for the, the new Bride Alive application. Many of you are probably familiar with this. But as soon as we log in, we're going to have a notification up here at the very top. I'll just get rid of that one. Um, this notification basically tells us that Jackie Jones booked an appointment on 11-1 at 2 o'clock. So if we click on the date, that'll take us directly into um, directly into the calendar, where the bride, or you can see, um, you know, the the bride's appointment on the calendar here. Now the calendar itself is is a lot newer. So for folks that are on the desktop product of Bride Alive, or the folks that are considering using uh, Bride Alive uh, at all, um, the calendar is much more sophisticated. So if we take a look here. Um, we've got a few different layouts. We have a fitting room view. We have an associate view, so we can see who's working with whom. We've got a you know traditional day, week, and month view like we have on on the desktop product. But across the top here, we'll notice that we have a few other things. The work schedule, for instance, we can see who's working on that day at a glance. We can also see any notes that the management team may have entered about that particular day. Maybe you have a bridezilla coming in and you want your staff to sort of tiptoe around that situation. Um, and then also, if you're in the habit of creating tasks, then the, uh, the system will show any tasks that are due that day. And then lastly, uh, before we jump in and, and work with this broad, I kind of want to demonstrate what we're calling the smart book. This is our proprietary algorithm that allows you, to, that creates the simplest way for you to book appointments that might come in over the phone, um, or through email uh, in some ways. So this uses the same logic that our online scheduler uses. So what happens is if somebody calls on the phone, it's really just two or three clicks away from getting an appointment booked. So if she calls in and says, hey, I want to come in for a bridal appointment, you ask, okay, which day would you like to come in? And if she says the 15th, the system will show you only the available fitting rooms that you can, uh, only available time slots that you can book appointments in. So you, what you do is you set up your fitting rooms, you set up your appointment blocks, you set up your staff schedule, and once you do all that, the system will respond in, in a way that uh, makes it super easy to book appointments. And really, it's three clicks away from booking an appointment. And this way, your staff is not making mistakes when they're booking. They're not having to figure out, oh, can I fit the person in here or fit them in there? 
So that's just one of the things I wanted to highlight uh, that's new in the, the online version of Bright Alive. So let's take a look at uh, Jackie Jones. So Jackie Jones is on our calendar. If I click the link, I can jump into her profile. So one of the nice things about Bride Alive is that it helps you manage every aspect of your relationship with the bride or any contact, truthfully. So when you first come to the contact profile screen, you'll see all her personal information, contact details. You can categorize your brides here, um, who is in charge of this bride, that sort of thing. But then over here on the left, the various different facets of your relationship are available. So if you take a look here and see uh, the event details and members, on this screen you can enter you know, all her event details when she's getting married. You can see that her event information populated from her appointment submission. You can go ahead and build out a wedding party. You can even go ahead and build out what the wedding party is wearing so that you can monitor the, the whole ordering process for that bridesmaid party. Um, to go ahead and create the purchase order um, for the entire ma maids party at one time as well. That's going to be a topic for a different webinar, but it's just good to know that that's, that information is in here. So next you have measurements. So you can track all the measurements for the brides, enter any notes about those measurements. Any pending appointments or any appointments and tasks that you've had for this particular bride are available here. We can see that we have one pending appointment on the first at two o'clock. And then we have also have messages. So messages can be emails, they can be text messages, they can be um, um, scheduled either you know in the future or things that have already been sent. So we can see here that just by virtue of booking an appointment on the website, Bright Alive has gone ahead and sent the uh, confirmation email, which looks something like this. Just this is what uh, we provide out of the box, but these can be completely customized. And the bride can go ahead and click to, to complete a wedding registration form. And that would, be, uh, that would be here. So this is kind of the pre-sale process. So the bride books the appointment. She gets a confirmation email right away. And she can kind of jump in here. This could be embedded on your website as well. But this is just our sort of standalone page. And she can go in and fill out any additional information that she might not have provided while booking the appointment. So we'll go through here. She's got her wedding date populated. She might want to say, I'm getting married in the afternoon at, I'll just do, uh, this is a place near us that people get married. Um, by bridesmaids, she's got a $2,500 gown budget. It's a semi-formal event. And then she can go nuts here in the vision and just you know tell you as much as she would like about what she's looking for, you know, the style of her wedding and that sort of thing. Then if she hits continue to my address, um, we're in the process of updating some of these images, but she can go ahead and select the different uh, attributes of wedding dresses that she's looking for, and then simply complete the questionnaire. Once she does that, you'll get your, your notification up here at the top. Let me just dismiss this. And we'll see that the interview was submitted by Jackie. So now what a lot of folks are doing is using that information prior to the appointment so that they can get a feel for what this bride is looking for. And it really changes the dynamic from a, a thing where she comes in and you say, hi, you know, who are you, what's your name kind of thing to, oh, it looks like you're interested in beaded ball gowns. I've got a few in mind that I've already pulled. Um, why don't you go ahead and have a look around? You know, Whatever it is that you normally say during the appointment, it'll really provide that more personalized type of uh, sale than, uh, because it is such an intimate process. Um, or intimate product and and so you're able to sort of tailor your sales pitch to what it is that she's liking before she ever comes. and then we can also see here that she's got a reminder scheduled as well inside the reminder the bride has the option of confirming the appointment and when she does your appointment you'll get a notification that the appointment has actually been confirmed that's a nice feature as well uh, keeps you from having to call brides the day before the appointment Next, you can manage the favorites. So you can see all the different dresses that she's tried on. You can track those favorites. Uh, if you can simply create a special order from those favorites um, and kind of do that sort of thing. Any purchase history that she's had, um, her interview, we can see here. And then also any feedback. And we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that in just a minute. So this is what's happened before the appointment. If we go back to our calendar on the 1st, the bride will have now submitted her appointment. She will have received a confirmation message where she went ahead and uh, completed the interview. And now she's showing up at your door. And when she does the ball, you're going to go ahead and use your effective sales techniques 
to, to go ahead and sell that dress. And when you're done, you're going to want to come back into Bride Alive and complete the appointment. Now, one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing is, is following a process so that later in the year or whenever you're looking to sort of get some sort of uh, actionable data outside out of the program, that you can actually do that. So one of the things that's nice about Bride Alive is you can mark appointments as canceled or mark them as no-showed or complete them. Um, and then that way, later in the year, if you want to see how effective you are at getting contacts to come or brides to come into your store, then um, you can you can do that with one of our reports. And also, if you find that you're getting a lot of cancellations or a lot of no-shows, you might want to tweak that pre-sales process. You, you can sort of nurture that bride a little bit different way. Maybe you need to put a phone call in your process to, to help uh, you know strengthen that, that relationship before she comes in. Um, so that's one of an, a very effective tool that you can follow and add to your process. But here what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and, and complete the appointment. Oops, it says I got to assign somebody. So I'm going to put Rachel in charge of this one and because she does all the real work around here. Um, but uh, anyway, so now what you're seeing here is an example of the marketing automation functionality in Bright Alive. So we've set up, it's called Smart Flows. And so we've set up before uh, in our system, we've set it up so that whenever an appointment is completed, our, our staff member is prompted to go ahead and send a feedback request email and if she didn't buy, you can really just categorize the bride to your not purchased list. This will allow you to sort of market to the, just that segment of bride in the future. And then also you can go ahead and hit create new sale uh, or a special order, for instance. And that's what we're going to do here. So simultaneously, we're going to go ahead and send the feedback request and create a new special order. So we can see here that we've got a special order created for Jackie Jones. Um, here's the date. I'm going to go ahead and assign Rachel to this. And then... Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and add this particular dress that we've been working with here. It's called the fantasy dress. Now, what you may have noticed here is the red Smart Flows button popping up down at the bottom. When that happens, that means that Bridal Live is detected. We've set up a Smart Flow to detect that whenever a bridal gown is sold, that we want to prompt the user to go ahead and do some of these Smart Flows. This allows you to create a systematic process so that all of your contacts are getting categorized correctly, they're getting followed up with correctly. There's all sorts of other steps that you can put into these smart flows. Like for instance, uh, setting up a bride to receive a follow-up sequence of emails or um, you know, categorizing her in a certain way, which is what we're doing here. You can also maybe schedule a, a task for one of your associates to maybe follow up on the order or um, send a handwritten thank you letter. All sorts of things that you can do. And you wanna focus, a lot of folks get sort of confused thinking maybe they're not utilizing the system as much as they can. And the biggest thing that you want to do that I always recommend is figure out what your process is. What do you want to do for your brides? How can you set up your marketing and sales process so that you're not only um, effectively selling to the bride, but you're also selling to her in a way that fosters referrals. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and just complete this basic smart flow here and we can ask the bride, would you like us to send you an email receipt? A lot of folks are wanting to do that today. It prevents you from having to print that second receipt and now we're just going to go ahead and hit process smart flows. So she'll be categorized and then she'll also get the receipt. So once the smart flows have been processed and that can be done really in any order, you're going to need to go ahead and take payment. So payment is, is really basic in this system. If you have a merchant account, you'll be able to click a button here that says process credit card. We've also set it up so that the system defaults to 50%. So we can see that our, our amount due is 1404.50 and the system is saying the 50% down is 702.25. So I'm gonna go ahead and just record a cash payment for uh, Rachel and hit add payment. So the amount due is, is now um, updated and you'll then print the receipt. Let's go ahead and print the receipt. The receipt looks something like this. It's got all your terms and conditions and any description of the product that you might want to include, your logo, and um, you know various other payment history and stuff like that. So after you print it, you'll get the bride to sign it, and you'll keep that copy for your records. If she didn't want an email receipt and you wanted to print her out one, you would just print two copies of that receipt, keep the signed one, give her the unsigned one, just like they do in a restaurant. 
Okay, so at some point in the future, you know, this bride is going to leave and you're going to go on to sell to another bride. Um, so what you're going to do eventually later on, your hiring, sorry, your ordering manager or, or yourself or somebody who's in charge of ordering is going to live in this new smart view feature. So this is a new feature that we have uh, in the system. The goal behind the smart view is to highlight all the different sort of points of failure in this process. Um, there are a lot of stores make mistakes when they don't have a system in place. And so what we're trying to do with the smart view is um, sort of let these sort of things float up to the top so that you can see um, what needs to be ordered basically and, and what hasn't been fulfilled yet. So if we look here at the unissued special orders, this is the first uh, under the special order area, the most important one. These are the orders that the customers have placed with you, but you have not yet received from your manufacturer. Or sorry, that you have not placed with your manufacturer. So all you do, you sit down once or twice a week, you click on unissued purchase order, uh, special orders, and you go in and um, you would submit that purchase, that special order. So I've got a special order here, 171, and actually, no, it was this one. And I'm going to go ahead and um, and fulfill this now. So if I go in and to the special order, I would just click on purchase orders, click the items that I want to order. You know, maybe you have a veil and a special order gown. Maybe the veil is in stock. The rule with Bride Alive is that any time you have an order from a customer where one item needs to be special ordered you create a special order and then you can simply mark the other items as sold and um, the Bride Alive will not prompt you to create uh, purchase orders for those. But we're going to go ahead here and create a purchase order. We can see here that the purchase order created is 167. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Now this is the purchase order that you're going to then submit to your manufacturer. So we can submit that uh, either by phone, if a lot of folks call their orders in, uh, print it out and fax it in, or we can just simply send the email here. We just go in, select the purchase order template, all the stuff with in Bride Alive, all the email templates are merged um, right before sending, and we would just go ahead and send that out. So now the email has been sent to the manufacturer, and we're just going to go ahead and, and specify that we submitted this purchase order on this particular date. <clears throat> now we're just waiting on the manufacturer to confirm that. So as soon as I refresh our smart view here, we're going to see that the 15 bumps down to a 14 and that the order has been um, has been placed with the manufacturer. Actually, it was 16 bumped down to, four, to 15. So now we're going to go in and look at all the unconfirmed purchase orders. So we have our purchase order here and this is the purchase order. So when the manufacturer confirms the appointment, uh, confirms the PO with you, you're going to come back into the PO and just record that it's the estimated ship date. They said they're going to make it ship on the 29th, confirmation number, maybe something like that. And then you would leave the purchase order as is. <clears throat> Any purchase orders that aren't confirmed will float to the top and you'll be able to locate those via the smart view. Um, but any purchase orders that are confirmed will show up underneath the arriving purchase orders area here. So now when the purchase order comes in, I think it was purchase order 171. Let's go back in here, search purchase orders. We said, uh, was it 161? It's 167. So um, we'll go in and receive purchase order 167. So eventually, you know, you place your PO, the manufacturer confirms the uh, purchase order placement with you, and then now you're just waiting for the box to arrive. So a few months go by, and now all of a sudden you get a box, and inside there's an invoice. That invoice is going to have a purchase order number on it. And you're going to put that, per you're going to want to create what's called a receiving voucher to receive the item into the store. So you're going to create 167, you're going to retrieve the PO items, and here they are. Here's our address um, that we need to go ahead and order. Now, what you might notice here is that we're receiving vendor item name C300, but when we sold the product to the, to the bride, it was called Fantasy. That was an example of how Bride Alive helps you um, private label your products. 
So what we're going to need to do down here is to go ahead and put our invoice number in, and we're going to add an invoice date, and then we're going to then complete the voucher. Actually, well, what you can do before we do that, you might want to print a pickup slip. So I'm just going to click on the item and print a pickup slip, and the pickup slip gives you information like um, the uh, the bride's name, what the item is on there, and everything else, the balance due, and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go ahead. If this was a stock order, we could actually print labels from here, and that feature uh, allows you to print labels that you would then hang on your dresses. Uh, for the customers to look at when they come into the store. So we're going to click on complete voucher here. This is going to say, are you sure you want to complete this voucher? It's going to increase your quantity on hand for the item. So now as you receive the item, Bridal Lab is going to set it aside for that customer. And um, you, when they come in, you would then complete the special order. We're going to go through that right now. So we're going to click on yes. The voucher has been completed. And now you're just going to basically you can email the bride and say, hey, your bridal gown is in. Uh, this is an email template that we have. Basically just says, hey, your, your bridal gown is in. Uh, come on in and pick it up. Uh, you may want to put a task on your calendar too to go ahead and um, call the bride to let her know. But it, it is possible to, to do this as well. You can send an email and then you can just jump over to the contact and um, give her a call. Okay, so some time goes by. She eventually maybe scheduled an appointment to come in to uh, pick up the dress. And she eventually comes in and she says, hey, I'm Jackie. I'm here to pick up my dress. So you would just simply go into search transactions and search by Jackie. And actually, we need to go to Jackie's profile here. Jackie. Jackie Jones. And um, if we look at her purchase history, here she is. And now we'll just take final payment. Oh. Rachel and Mount Dew is nothing. We'll print the final receipt and then we'll complete the special order. Uh, let's see. Just in contact. Uh, okay. Um, so. Little issue there. Um, we're going to go ahead and complete the order. And now <clears throat> the order has been completed. So let's talk about the concept of completing a special order or a layaway. Um, the, the process of the reason why you complete an order is to reduce your inventory. Also, sales tax becomes due at that time. A lot of folks get confused thinking that sales tax is due when the initial order is created. But that's not the case. Uh, according to the generally accepted accounting principles, sales tax is due when the ownership of the product changes hands. So when a bride places an order with you, there's no product yet. It's not until you deliver that product to the bride that um, that is ultimately that tax is due. So you need to complete the special order at the end of the entire process. As you're handing that gown to the bride, before you hand the gown to the bride, complete the special order and then hand it to her. Um, that will ensure that you've got a process set up so that you're effectively reducing your inventory, you're making sure your sales tax is getting paid correctly, and you're also removing this special order from your pending list because a special order remains pending throughout the entire sales cycle. So we're going to, um, and that would be basically the, uh, the entire process. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, we are going to look over here on the right. I have got a few questions. Um, let's see here. Go ahead and ask your questions now. It looks like most of these were. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the screen sharing. Uh, here we go. So I'm looking at. And am I connected question? Uh, yes, I hope you are connected, Jerry. Um, good morning from Michigan. Hi, Kim. How are you today? Hope everything is going well. And we're looking at uh, Joyce from Boston. Hi, Joyce. Glad you were able to join today. Ashley, 
Are we live yet? We are. Sorry, I didn't see these until just now. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a few minutes here. I know there's a delay on the on the stream, so I'll give you a few minutes to um, ask some questions. Please go ahead and ask them if you do have them. If not, we'll end the broadcast. I'll give you five minutes to get some questions answered. So while I wait for some questions to come in, I'll uh, I'll tackle some of the more the more common questions. Um, oh, here we go. Will your system alert me to late orders, running orders from manufacturers? Yes, it will. Um, it doesn't necessarily do an alert, but that would be part of the process that the store would be in. in uh, involved with doing um, what they would do is they would essentially search for orders that are either unconfirmed or orders that were supposed to ship um, that were supposed to ship and haven't yet shipped uh, or are running late. Uh, so you would just filter your purchase order list for uh, dresses or orders that should have shipped maybe last week and you can you can look at all those orders and then follow up with the manufacturer on those orders. Where can I pull the report for freight costs? Good question. That would be your receiving report, I believe. Um, let's take a look. Size receiving voucher journal. That would be your receiving voucher journal, Kim. I'm going to select that question. Um, the freight cost is on your receiving voucher journal. Let me go back, back to the screen. I'll go ahead and share my screen again and show that. So if you go to reports, you go to receiving voucher journal and you'll have your freight here. And it'd just be a grand total of all your freight. What other questions do we have? Lots of info, thanks. Thank you, Joyce. One of the other popular questions we get, um, oh, does Bride Alive export to QuickBooks from Janice? Yes, it does. Um, we have a good, a good video tutorial on that. Um, if you go over to point of sale, under settings, point of sale preferences, there's a QuickBooks export. Um, we've got some important information. Here's a thorough article and video on how this is done. You're gonna wanna involve your CPA with this. Um, but yes, it does export to QuickBooks. It does all of your information in aggregate. So at the end of the day, you'll have some journal entries made. All of your receiving vouchers will come across as bills in QuickBooks. And then you can simply match the payments up to those bills. Got an email from Jerry, or sorry, a question from Jerry saying, I have an extremely old Bride Alive. Will I need to add everything manually? So the process of migrating to Bride Alive, um, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. Um, if your extremely old bridal program can export your inventory, uh, maybe your customer list from that program, then we can import it all into the Bride Alive application. Um, if you cannot export it, then uh, the fastest way to get things added to Bride Alive is by uh, using the import spreadsheet. So let me just kind of touch on that a little bit. I'll go back to the application and go over here. So under inventory, if you go to search items, you'll see that there's an import button. There's an import template that you can download. Uh, we also have uh, a help, to, help article that talks about how to do all this but you would download the, the import template. And then inside that template, wait for it to come up, is basically an example of items. So you would just enter your item information in here and then it would load all into the, into the software. So that's really the fastest way to do it. 
a lot of folks um, that I've talked to uh, have an old system or are coming from another system and their, their inventory levels are all messed up or their items are messed up and they like to start fresh. But for those who have an accurate system, then um, what you would do is you could import it in. Great question, Jerry. Thank you. Um, from Jerry, it says, my website is outdated. Can you help me with a new site? So we had, uh, for about two years, we did websites and um, we stopped doing them and taking new clients on websites because we want to focus now on what we're best at and we are best at providing software. Uh, we were f sort of finding that a uh, little bit of an identity crisis, I guess you could say, where we were doing websites, we were doing SEO, we were doing software, and um, we wanted to, to, with the launch of our new software, we wanted to pare it down and focus strictly on um, creating the best software application that there is for Bridal. And that's what we're doing now. Um, so recommendations for a uh, web designer, uh, I usually, if you're really constrained on your budget, I would recommend Wix, Weebly, or Squarespace. Um, or there, we have been talking with a company um, I think it's Wedding Industry Rescue is the name of the company and I spoke with the, the fellow Shay over there who um, is in charge of doing websites and I think they charge on average between three and five thousand for their sites um, but a lot of the sites seem pretty nice the most important thing about a site is that it converts um, you and that it ranks high obviously that it that drives traffic and it ranks high um, in your search results and people actually come to it. So um, I would say that uh, if you're looking to do a new website, that'd be where you'd want to want to go explore some of those res resources. When will I hear about the cost of the program? Okay, great question. Um, so I'm going to go back and share our pricing page. All of our pricing is right on the web um, underneath on bridalive.com pricing. We've got a few plans. We've got a free plan. This is for stores that are sort of just getting started or you have just one user and you're just sort of trying out Bridal and seeing if your business works or if there's a market for your, your product. That's why we created the free product. The, really, there is no excuse not to be computerized anymore. I mean, this day and age, um, you shouldn't be paper-based. Uh, there's a free product out there, which is Bridal Live, that you can get started on. And as you grow your business, add more staff, need more functionality, you can, um, you can upgrade your plan. We've got a basic plan, which gives you sort of our prom registry feature, um, the ability to send email through the program. And then we have a standard plan, which basically gives you everything that we offer, you know, the iPad app, the, uh, all the website forms, the smart flows that we saw, uh, prom registry, emailing, tech support, up to 10 users, all the point of sale and everything else, everything that you could want from Bright Alive, unless you have multiple stores. And if you have multiple stores, you'd bump up on the elite plan. These prices are a monthly subscription cost. Uh, in order for us to deliver this service to you, we have an extremely high bill uh, to create a highly available and redundant system on the web. And so um, unfortunately, it wouldn't be feasible, to, feasible for us to do a pay in full type situation. Great question, Jerry. OK, I'm going to answer Jen Walker. Hi, Jen. When we go to add new inventory item, it doesn't have a vendor number option unless I duplicate an existing item. Is there a way to have that option without duplicating an old item? A vendor item option. Well, you'd want to have to specify that the item is private label. And as soon as you do that, you'll see the vendor item name there. Hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, feel free to submit a support ticket in and we'll get you helped out. Okay, Ramona, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the other informative web sessions. Great, I'm glad you found this useful and we will be doing more of these. It looks like it's pretty popular. We've got over 70 people uh, signed up. It's fantastic. We're looking forward to helping you get the most out of your investment in Bright Alive. Okay, so if someone orders two special orders on the same day, am I supposed to write up two invoices? Good question, Joyce. Um, two special orders on the same day, this is more of an accounting question. So um, if it's the same day, I would say you would just add the item to the existing special order. If it goes into, let's say, next week or the following month, 
or if when the dress comes in, a lot of people are adding uh, alterations to the existing special order. That isn't usually the best idea because from an accounting perspective, your accountant will be pissed off at you if you do that because you, what you're doing is you're actually saying that the, the order, when the order was originally placed, that maybe the alterations order was taken at that time as well. I recommend um, creating a special order for the initial order and then if she comes back and plays and you know pays the final amount and she's doing alterations now you would complete the one special order which would mark that product as um, you know uh, her she would own it and then you would create a special order for alterations but that's our recommendation there's nothing stopping you from from doing that uh, next question from Beth hi Beth what is the best way to be notified if a bridal party has not gotten their bridesmaid information on a timely basis to place an order? Is there something in the smart flow that we can see if I have missed their order by date or is this a task? Good question. Let me bring up the screen again. Uh, share. Okay. So that's going to be under smart view. Bridesmaids parties missing orders. We've got five of them here. So if we jump into one, if I look at the Connie Thomas order here, and if I go to her event details, this is kind of a little bit further in, um, but basically we've got a bridesmaid on here that has not created her special order. As soon as we do create the transaction for her and get all her order placed, then if we went back to the smart view and refreshed it, that four would bump down to five. I mean, that five would bump down to four. There you go. That means that she's placed it with you and now they're ready for purchase order. And so you just go into the purchase order one. There she is. And we'll go ahead in here. I'll show you this real quick. Go back into the wedding registry. And then you would just create the purchase order from there. Now you see that she's got a sales order and a purchase order. You would have all your bridesmaids on this list. And they would all be showing the order status there. All right. Hope that helps. If it's not clear, just let me know. Um, next thing from Cami. Is the actual wear date used on the purchase order? I pad all my dates for safety. Good question. Um, so the event date is put on the purchase order. Um, you can take that out if you would like. Um, you can put a different date in the notes area, which do print out. Um, and on the email template, if you didn't want the pre-filled event date to be included, you could also put it on the notes area. How do we encourage brides to make appointments through Bridal Live instead of calling in? That's a good question. Um, well, I think you'd want to ask yourself, how do brides first hear about me? Um, so you may want to do a little surveying of your customers that way. Um, but if they hear about you primarily by doing a Google search and coming to your website, and then they're picking up the phone to call you, that's really not a bad thing because context switching is one of the main reasons why your leads are gonna drop um, from the web. If they have to go from surfing the web to then picking up a phone because a lot of them are at work or somewhere where they don't have access to making a call. Um, so the best thing to do is to have an effective call to action on your website, right? You wanna have um, a clear path to conversion. Um, so when somebody comes to your website, if we look back on this website um, that we created here, I go back and share the screen here. Um, you'll see. I mean, make an appointment is, is, you know, there's a lot of studies that have been done on how to, um, you know, get folks to convert. Um, this is just a basic example that we've created. This site is not optimized for conversion, but you want to give people on every page the ability to schedule an appointment, to request an appointment, whatever it is, wherever they are. Uh, maybe they're researching your collections and maybe they get down to the bottom of the page and they, um, you want to give them, you know, what's next? Schedule your appointment. You want to lead them through the funnel that you want them to, to convert with. I hope that answers your question, Jerry, uh, Laura. All right. Next one. Will you be doing a web session on prom registry? Um, we don't have our web sessions mapped out yet. 
Um, prom registry is really pretty straightforward. Um, what I'll do is kind of demonstrate it a little bit here. Uh, let me go and share my screen again. Um, let's just kind of show how this would work. So real quick, into the, into the area, if we search for, I think this uh, 985 item is a prom dress. Uh, yep, a little prom dress here. So the way that Bride Alive controls, the way that prom registry works in Bride Alive is that you set up your items and then the items can be, uh, you can be prompted to register that dress when you sell the item. So the way it works is that you, you add your item to the system, you check the box that says prompt to register when sold. And then if we go over here and let's just say we're gonna create a sale for 985. And as soon as we create that, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna register this dress? Now in this example, I've already got the dress registered to, um, I just have my local high school, but if the bride, or sorry, if the prom girl was at a different place, a new school, uh, you could put a date in there, you could go ahead and just register it there as well. So now if we go back and look at our prom registry, oops, I gotta go ahead and, can't leave the screen without paying, um, paying for the order, so let me go ahead and make the payments here, add payment, check out, Oh, I had to put somebody on here. Prom girl, check out. Yes. And we'll go into prom registry here. And now we'll see that the 985, if I search for 985, that it's been registered to new school and my local high school in two different colors. I hope that answers your question. Um, we may do a session on prom registry. It's kind of a smaller topic. Um, probably one of our shorter sessions, but we may include it in uh, maybe the point of sale one or, or a different one as well. But we'd love to have suggestions on what topics you guys would think would be valuable. So please do submit your suggestions to us. All right, so we're gonna wrap it up here. Um, before we leave, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about what's next. So if you are an existing customer that's using the Bride Alive desktop product and you want to um, and you want to migrate to the, the online version, go ahead and email us at help at bridealive.com. Put your store name in there, your name, and we'll get you on our migration schedule. Uh, it's a first come first serve basis. So we have got, uh, I think we're booked out till the first or second week in November right now, but we, uh, we are working as fast as we can to get everybody over. For folks that are um, just signed up for Bride Alive and you're ready to get started, um, if we haven't scheduled your setup meeting yet, which we normally do when you sign up, but if you've, you've signed up and you're ready to um, schedule your setup meeting, that's where we walk you through all your settings and everything like that, then go ahead and email us at help at Bride Alive or just call us. Um, give us a call. Our number and email addresses are on the website. So please get in touch. We want to help you uh, make the most of it. And then um, if you're just looking, at the software and you're not sure you're still in the research phase um, I want to talk with you about what's holding your business back why um, what you need out of a software package or what you need to help grow your business so please give me a call I'd love to chat with you about about how your business can be more successful here come 2015 I've had a couple more questions pop in uh, I just want to go ahead and answer those real quick let's see how do you search for a specific dress in the dress finder gallery? We're only able to see all the dresses from the vendor and once we want to look just for a specific one. If you want to look for a specific one, you will be um, using the item search feature. The gallery is more intended to be a thing people browse through. We do have on the roadmap a, a bunch of feature requests for the gallery. One of them includes adding further um, criteria to the search. And so we will be doing that sort of thing. I think that's gonna be in version 1.9, which will probably be out in a couple weeks. Hope that answers your question, Jen. Next question, how do you pay bills? Um, bills are paid uh, through QuickBooks. So Bright Alive uh, is your operations system. QuickBooks is your financial system. That's where you're gonna pay your bills. You're gonna do your profit and loss. You're gonna do all the sort of back office um, functions in there. Bright Alive will export your receiving vouchers, which represent the invoices that you've received from your manufacturer, 
it will export those to QuickBooks and then you will be paying your bills through QuickBooks. I hope that helps answer your question as well. All right, that is the end of it. We're coming up here on the end of the meeting. If you want to get in touch, please get in touch with us. We'd love to have uh, you know any questions or help you further get using the product. Uh, one more question. When will there be a mobile version of Bright Alive? It's on the iPad right now. We are working on getting it down, the form factor down to a mobile phone. Um, that is one of the things we're working on. It's really difficult to get so much information on the screen down to such a small form factor, but it is on the roadmap. It'll probably be coming out sometime or maybe early next year. Have a good one, everyone. Take care.